it's time to make another CNC video. So here I am in front of my Bridgeport Torque Cut 22. I thought it would be cool to show you how I make these badass CNC aluminum coasters, which you can buy, by the way, on my website, russellmakes.com store. Let's get into it. You know, I'm standing here thinking I want to like give you a spiel on why I do what I do and why I'm making CNC aluminum coasters. Do you care or do you just want to watch me make some coasters? I don't know. Tell me in the comments. So yeah, you don't need a CNC aluminum coaster. Nobody needs it. I don't need to make them. I don't need to have a CNC mill. I don't need to have any of the stuff that I have. But to me, it's about the learning process. It's about figuring out how things are made and figuring out how I can make them. I mean, this coaster project was a perfect example of this and it's kind of why I want to show you how I make these. The way I was going to do it initially, which I'll show you in a second, I'll get there, didn't work at all, which means I had a problem to solve. I needed to figure out a way that I could hold a thin part and I'm not a CNC, I mean, I'm kind of a CNC machinist now, but I'm not really a CNC machinist. I just bought this machine and I've been teaching myself how to use it. But to me, that is the way to learn. I pick a project and I just go down the rabbit hole and I learn all these things that I would have never tried to learn before. But to make a CNC aluminum coaster, I had to learn how to run a CNC mill, get some CAD software, CAD CAM software, get all kinds of tooling. I got end mills in here. I mean, I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars to make coasters. Like that doesn't make sense, which is which is why I'm telling you, this is about learning. This is about teaching myself and using projects to learn new skills. And that to me is the root of it all. So let's, all right, let's just get into it. First, I'm gonna show you the first way I tried to do this, which did not work and I'll explain why it didn't work. All right, the vice is out of the machine right now. I got it just setting on the welding table. Now we wanna make one of these coasters, right? Which means we're gonna start with a blank piece of material like this, somewhere in there, there's a coaster. All right, so step one, obviously, we're gonna load the material into the vise. Now, I've got these Mighty Bite jaws, which work great, because they just barely grab the bottom edge of the, of the material. So anyways, we're gonna load it in there, and we're gonna tighten it down, right? Now, to illustrate the first problem here, I'm gonna put this mag base clamp onto the vise. I'm gonna situate this so you can see it. Put that on zero. All right, so we're indicating the middle of the part now. When I tighten this down, ooh, see what's happening there? As I squeeze it, the middle of the part is actually bowing up. Okay, imagine if you're doing the same thing with a business card like this. See how when I squeeze the ends, it bows up in the middle? The same thing is happening here. All right, so now you're like, big deal, man. It's five thousandths. Like, yeah, the part is sprung up a little bit, so you're gonna do all this flat machining, and then when you let go of the vise, it's gonna drop back down, so it's gonna be a little bit concave in the middle, but it's a coaster, who cares? You're right, except then we have to move on to op two, which means we've machined the whole top side, and we end up with something that looks like this. All right, so the first operation is done here, which basically means the coaster is all cut out, the shape is there, but it's still attached to this bottom card, which is what we were holding it by in the vise before. Now we need to flip it over and be able to hold it in the vise. So I've cut some soft jaws here that are in the shape of this. So I can just put that down in there, tighten the vise down and get a good grip, right? Well, let's put the indicator back on here. All right, hopefully you can see that all right. Now let's tighten it down. Oh, look at that, we've got the same problem but it's even a little bit worse. Now we're almost all the way up at 10 thousandths. Not only that, but we actually do not have very much grip strength here at all. And I'll tell you how I know. It's because the first few times I tried this, I had it upside down in the vise, and as the mill was coming back and forth, cutting a little bit of material, a little bit more material, you can see how here I wasn't cutting all the way through, but all of a sudden now I'm cutting all the way through to the grooves, I'm cutting all the way through to the grooves, and then bam, the end mill caught right here and chucked this thing out of the vise. What was happening is, as it kept making cuts, end mills pull up on the part because of the helical cut that they have. They're pulling material up off of the surface, so it wants to pull the part out of the vise. And so as it advanced further and further, it was pulling up a little bit more, a little bit more, and eventually, 
bang, out of the vise. So what did I do? Tried it again. Point is, this does not work, all right? So, all right, Mr. Slick, first attempt did not work whatsoever. So what other method of work holding do we have available to us? Well, that's when I started learning about vacuum work holding, vacuum fixtures. So you're not trying to squeeze this thing from the outside because we know that bends it up. We need to hold it down nice and uniformly. So if you could plop this down on something and draw a vacuum underneath it, the pressure of the atmosphere would hold it down in equal amounts all around the rest of the part. Now that's what I'm talking about. So let's make a vacuum fixture. All right, so now we're back at the machine and I've already made a vacuum fixture. This is a, this has been a process. <laughs> now, if I'm gonna make a vacuum fixture, I wanna be able to produce these things in numbers. I want it to be efficient. I want this to be a decent manufacturing process. So I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and make one that holds four coasters all at the same time. Actually, kind of eight coasters all at the same time. Let me show you what I got going on. All right, so here is the vacuum fixture in all its glory. Now I've got O-ring around the edges of all these, all through here. Um, there's a vacuum port here, and there's vacuum ports all through here. I can shut off the vacuum for these or for this. So if I want to only machine op one and not have parts loaded into the op two position, I can do that. Or if I want to only machine op two, I can do that. But ideally, I would have a piece of material like this in the op one position. And then I will have already machined op one and I will have flipped that part over into here. And so I can machine op one and op two in the same program and so every time I return to the machine, every 45 minutes or whatever, I get four finished coasters and I get one op one done. So I take the four finished coasters off of the machine and then I switch this over to here. I put a new piece of material on and that's it. I hit go again. The machine cycles again and just... All right, so now I've got vacuum lines running into these valves and then it goes into this nice little mason jar. And then I've got a vacuum line going up. All right, so this is by no means the permanent location of this, but I still kind of have this rigged. This is a vacuum generator, and this is just a pneumatic switch. So when I flip this switch, air flows through this generator, and it creates a vacuum in this line over here. This line goes down to here, creates a vacuum inside this mason jar, and then goes through here, and right now, there's a vacuum underneath this piece, and I cannot for the life of me, lift that. All right, so now that brings us to present day. We're gonna run some coasters. I haven't run this program in a long time. It worked last time I did it, it should work, but honestly, you never know. <laughs> now I do wanna try something new here. I've never done this, but I've got this little Sony action cam that has a waterproof case. I'm gonna mount it to a mag base and put it inside the machine. So hopefully we get a really cool time lapse to see what this looks like. I don't know if the footage is gonna look real good, but let's give it a shot. Oh gosh, here we go. All right. I'm recording on the, on what I'm gonna call the danger cam. <laughs> oh, all right. All right, I've got it mounted to the spindle now, which is kind of cool because you'll be able to see tool changes. I'll probably just let it be there for the rest of the program. It's not perfect. I need to add like a little air blast on the lens to keep to keep the droplets from forming on the lens, but it's it's fine for now.
Alright, so now we got to switch to OP2. I already turned the vacuum off. And we can just take that out. And that's still on a big card. But now it just holds four coasters. So now we got to switch to the OP2 position. I'm going to pull these earplugs out. I just have these in there to keep most of the gunk out of the vacuum holes that I'm not using. Blow those out. Swap my valves here. Alright, I've got everything on. You can probably hear the vacuum running. I've got the right program queued up. I've got the spindle cam mounted. I'm not sure how that looks, so I'm also going to set this camera up just in front of the door to hopefully get some good footage from another angle. So, here we go. Let's run this one. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh man, gotta love it. I wrote this program a little while ago. It's nice to be able to just load it back up and run it again and actually have success. It feels so good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe. Now, if you're like, oh, I already liked, I, I'm already subscribed, I wanna do more. I want, I want more, I want one of those coasters. I understand. You can buy these coasters that I just made tonight on my website, russellmakes.com slash store. The link is gonna be in the description or my bio or wherever you're seeing this. Not only do I have those raw ones that I made tonight, but look at this, I got, I got stock, man. I got orange, I got red, I got turquoise, purple. Look at this one. Oh, oh in a future video, I'm gonna be going over aluminum anodizing and fancy colors like this. So. Tune in for that, hit subscribe, hit like, maybe go to my store, maybe buy some coasters, I don't know, whatever you feel like. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.